Brag Brian is about having fun. Um, I think anybody, everybody and anybody should do it because it's, it's just so, I don't know, it's just so unique. Really test you, your abilities, you know, and uh, kind of put you through the mill. So rolling Mardi Gras. That's all it is, one party from one end of the state to the other, from the Missouri to the Mississippi. What else is there to say? It's cranking across the country. It's crawling o'er the land. This snake is known as Ragbri. And numbers some ten grand. Ten thousand hungry riders. Ten thousand bikes roll through. It happens every summer. To make your dreams come true. Some say it's just a party. Some say it's all for fun. Some come here for the challenge. To say that it's been done. Almost 500 miles. Through corn and beans. And hay. You know it makes your butt hurt. But you ride it anyway. Iowa's the place it happens. Ragbri is the name. The register takes care of details. So you'll be glad you came. It's seven days of summer. Days wrapped in a whirl. Days you will remember. When snowflakes start to swirl. Sioux Center on to Spencer. Algona, Hampton too. Then down the road to Orwine. And Cedar Rapids through. Washington's the next stop. Then on to Burlington. It's Ragbri 1990. Through wind and rain and sun. It's Ragbri 1990 through wind. And rain. And sun. The town is Sioux Center. It's prepared for the biggest rag bri ever with monuments of a sort. And as part of the bargain, this town of 5,000 gets a taste of perhaps its biggest traffic jam ever. The population swelling from 5,000 to more than 15,000. That runs to the right, you go on there and you're on 6th Street. Sioux Center is ready for the chaos, and it seems the chaos is ready for Sioux Center. It's just a bicycle in the back of my head. I bet this is a top fly. That's a top fly. Oh, what a party. <laughs> It's like, well, I actually know somebody. I can't imagine. I mean, I met people from Italy and France before. I was like, whoa, what are you doing in Iowa? <laughs> By now, the condition is quite clear. Ragbri-itis has set in. And after 18 years of it, just about everyone can predict the symptoms and the cures. Iowa hospitality. <laughs> Women. To find men. <laughs> Good time. Party. Party. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> Ah, uh, a lot of fun. Great. It's too early to say. It's a sore butt and no showers for a week. It's a good time. Fun. And pain. It's like adult summer camp. Well, I think it's like going to summer camp for the guys. I like all the tandems and stuff. Fun, food, and frolic. What's the scoop out here? It's a little cool. That's what the yeah, scoop is. It is <laughs> but it's fun. The air is a bit brisk as small tent cities bloom on almost every available lawn, and pre ragbri boasting blossoms wherever anyone will listen. Been training hard uh, <laughs> last yeah. couple months, uh, probably 100 miles a day. Uh. You have to train, Jimmy. To <laughs> listen to this. He has not rode one iota. That's he has awesome. not rode any yet this year. <laughs> so he's really going to be pushing it. It's classical rag bribe bickering, and there's perhaps only one other indication that better proves riders are ready to go. Rag bribe night, yeah! Yes! <laughs> yes! It's the proverbial storage of fluids that these riders seem to be after. 
preparation for a week of perspiration. The perspiration of thousands who stand ready and willing. What are we singing? Hurry up, me. It's six o'clock Sunday morning. The sun is just coming up, and after an almost frosty night, just about everyone is out of bed early. That free Sioux Center continental breakfast is making a lot of friends. And there's Grandpa Ragbri himself, John Karras, kicking things off for the 18th year in a row. Meanwhile, Ragbri co-host, Iowa boy Chuck Offenberger, assumes the television interview honors. It was chilly here last night. My goodness, I don't know what the temperature was, but it was darn darn cool, except warm little town did a tremendous job. They went all out, and I'm sure that we'll be bringing Rag Ride back to Six Center again. They did that one. By now, thousands of riders are already on the way to Spencer for a picture-perfect ride. What's different about this one than in the last three or four years, especially, is that the drought cycle, thankfully, is broken in Iowa, and Iowa is beautifully green. We're, we've been riding through a brown Iowa for three or four years, and so the riders will notice that. Good morning. Seen wake up now, wake up. Time to go. <laughs> nice collars, you won't get hit too often with them. All right. One, two, one, two. Come on, let's go. Sioux Center veterinarian Warren Thompson is among the locals who get up early for the send off. He says that those green visions along the way aren't the only sensory treats awaiting riders. Two counties, number one for hogs, and number two for cattle production, and number five for dairy in the state of Iowa. So. You'll smell that all the way out of town now. And the chase is on. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 10,000 noses winding across Sioux County. Perhaps not in search of those special scents, but certainly sure of what they are when they waft across the road. <laughs> Apparently, having heard that ragbri is always a special eating event, the pigs help themselves in obvious joy at about the same time riders stop in for the first of many snack breaks. We have hot apple cider, hot coffee, and Gatorade, and authentic Rice Krispie bars for authentic bike riders. The folks from Sheldon are simply following a two-part Iowa instinct. Part one, you cook until you can't. Part two, you sell what you cook on Ragbri to support a worthy cause. It's our church's youth group, high school youth group, that's doing it. But it's not prudent for riders to spend too much time here because the next stop and the next Iowa born and bred concessionaire is just down the road. That next stop is the one and only Primgar. It's here that a sort of animal attraction takes over. Some riders apparently haven't been able to burn enough energy off yet, and a party breaks out. Meanwhile, it's obvious that locals have used a little livestock watering ingenuity to help quench the thirst of large numbers of riders in a hurry. And it's also quite clear that you have to watch out for your friends when they let you go first. Hey, Chuck, how you doing? Oh, man. And now a ragbri first with the official ragbri action cam super slow motion instant replay. Hey Chuck, how you doing? <laughs> oh, <laughs> with the dunking complete, the drinking done, and the rest of the day's ride still ahead, it's back on the road towards Spencer. Ragbri 18 is undoubtedly the biggest traffic load this road has ever handled, and it means a lot to farmers like Irv Riedemann. 
I just uh, really think it's great seeing all these people go down the highway and different colors, different bikes. Really beautiful. The day's distance is now almost done, but not without one last party. Bragg-Bry veterans from Team Gumby join Irv Riedemann in watching the extravaganza go by. And the view from up here is not bad at all. It's even high enough to see over the corn. Now Spencer, 61 of 495 miles are out of the way, and the tune changes pace at the Clay County Fairgrounds, while many hit the sack to recover. The ride to Spencer is the shortest leg of the ride, and the day's weather is being called Ragbri's best ever. Of course, that leaves a good Iowa impression on everyone from just about everywhere. Morocco. Wisconsin. Indiana. Michigan. Indiana. Iowa. <laughs> La Crosse, Wisconsin. Wichita, Kansas. Oh, well, I come from Australia. I'm from northern Michigan. Atlantic, Atlantic Iowa. Iowa. From Iowa City. Cedar Rapids, Iowa. West Bend, Iowa. Iowa. Rapid City, South Dakota. I'm from Los Alamos, New Mexico. Glad to be here in Iowa. From Davenport, Iowa. Uh, Des Moines, Iowa. I'm from Denison, Iowa. I'm from Denison, Iowa, too. From Denmark. Copenhagen, Denmark. We're from Minneapolis. I'm from Denmark. Denver, Iowa. I'm from Denver, Colorado. All right. And you're moving there next I'm week, I'm moving right? there next week. I'm going to have to. <laughs> Sarasota, Florida. Dallas, Texas. Chicago, Illinois. Manchester, Iowa. Overland Park, Kansas. I do a lot of biking in New Zealand, but my friend Lois from Iowa uh, kept writing to me about this ride, and I thought it was time I came and had a look. With New Zealanders among those from 50 states and two dozen other foreign countries represented, you might wonder if perhaps they've come to try and steal back the America's Cup. You probably weren't wondering about that, but in case you were, don't worry, John Gellis of San Diego is ready to sail. Well, it's uh, uh, 41 Columbia, and I got the idea to put the sail on it if it came out here and the wind was blowing so hard uh, up until the right started. It's, it does cut down the amount of energy I use to, to move this bike. The uh, bike's about 60 pounds without the gear on it. Like most of those on this first stop, Gellis set sail to the nightly parties. The various drinks of Ragbri are once again helping with fluid storage, and there are unconfirmed reports of drooling in the front three rows or so as High Heel and the sneakers take to the stage. It's now Monday morning. Remember, this is the day that most should be back on the job. But on Ragbri, there aren't any Monday morning back-to-work blues, especially with the sun out. And though heat is rising from pavement today, the temperature is refreshingly mild. Now and then, the Trek and other bicycle brands have to share the road with International Harvester, Massey Ferguson, and John Deere. But no one's complaining.
Ayrshire is today's first major snack stop, and the smorgasbord here also includes a human sandwich. But most are learning it's important not to jump at the first refreshments available, because there might be a better deal down the road. Since the riding goes fairly quickly today, West Bend arrives early, and many stop in at the famous Grotto of the Redemption for a brief tour. That, even though the religious landmark was recently voted Iowa's most boring tourist attraction. Well, I finally got up to speed and up to pass him. Just up the street, the downtown party is anything but boring. And with some down-home Iowa music in the air, an Englishman makes some comparisons between his home country and Iowa. Iowa's a lot flatter. Because that's a popular myth put about by Iowans to get people to come over here and ride through Iowa. <laughs> of course, every year there's considerable debate about just how flat Iowa really is, and perhaps we can clear the matter up later. But for now, the party in West Bend is winding down. And now it's back on the road for the final, and for some, the difficult miles into Algona. The Gopher College welcome and an Algona municipal shower helped prepare the riders for the world's longest cake. Well, I'll tell you, this cake's six blocks long. It's going to be in a Guinness Book of Records. Well, how'd you guys do? Oh, thank you. And our local baker, he made it. Oh, and uh, we spent about two hours when we put it on about five pickups and hauled it down here. We had to store it in a big building and under refrigeration. With Algona locals planning on a Guinness record, it's a piece of cake for everyone then on downtown for the usual evening festivities. Now it's Tuesday. The perfect weather of days past is missing with a threat of rain now along for the ride, but there's also an encouraging hand. All right. The high five greetings are welcome and down the road at St. Benedict there's yet another welcome sight. Chris cakes on the grill to help avert any possibility of hunger. If you guys want more, bring your plate back. It's all you can eat. That's just an appetizer. We've had 1,500 people today in three hours. By week's end, as many as 60,000 of these cakes will become rag dry fuel, and with today's breakfast now packed in, it's time to face the rain with what for many is standard rag dry rain gear. I've been on this thing 16 times now. I should know better. <laughs> like many others, Walter Dutton left his real raincoat at home. Memories of past rides apparently so good that many forgot it can get wet here. As the ride follows the countryside and then reaches Corwith, the good memories are also alive and well for New York's Larry Rampula. 
I rode my bike through a field of clover and was intoxicated by its perfume. I saw the sun set over a bull yard in Dyersville where a field of dreams was filmed and I know that I'll be back. It'll become a pilgrimage. Iowa, sweet Iowa. And while Rampula clearly has good memories, others are just beginning to build some. We're both virgins. This is our first one. We're having fun, aren't we? We're having fun. Next year, there will be things to remember. And if you're like Kathy McRoberts of Cedar Falls, you might even recall details about how high Kanawha hangs its parachutes over Main Street. They have them tied up a little bit higher. I think the last time they had these here, they were kind of like sucking down to the ground, weren't they? And finally, with the Ragbri route turning into memory lane today, you might wonder if these guys remembered to brush, or if this guy remembers that this is a bike ride and not a Dutch hop. Everybody that's a lolly da Everybody that's a lolly da Not everybody is willing to do the lolly da this morning, but with a dirt road ahead, maybe it's time to reconsider. You know that Iowa hospitality is in full bloom when people are willing to sweep a dirt road, but the best news is still two miles ahead. There's now some wear and tear visible on riders as arrival stretches well into the evening. Showers are critical after a long and wet ride, and that leads to some true innovation. There's about 75 gallons of water over there, and there's a demand pump over there with a 12-volt battery, and there's a shower stall. I mean, what more can you ask for? And if you're like Patrick here, a good shower is the best preparation you can have for a night downtown. I say hello. Local singers help provide entertainment that includes a parade and many other activities, despite more rain. I hate headwind! Today, it's 87 miles worth of wind and haze. This is the day that some riders choose to ride 100 miles, and the road seems to stretch out almost forever. With the ride about half over now, the trip is taking a toll. Bicycle Road Angels noting that equipment is starting to show the mileage. A lot of minor things like derailleur adjustments, uh, planking chains, dry chains, things like that. Most of, most of the repairs are pretty minor so far. There we go. Among the minor problems are broken spokes. Dawson Strutt and his daughter are in for their second spoke repair of the day. Well, we had a spoke that had just broken up in the last hill. This morning we had five of them break and we fixed those must be too heavy in the back tire. We're breaking spokes today. Who's riding the back? She is. <laughs> too many dove bars. <laughs> if fewer dove bars were the answer, problems would be relatively easy to avoid. However, it's not quite that simple. The thing that would be most helpful for most people here is if they pack a little chain lube in with their bikes and so that they can lube their chains. I hear a lot of squeaky chains. Um, most of the pro other problems are going to be unforeseen and in some cases they've already gone to the point of having their bike serviced before they got here. They did everything right. They just had something unforeseen happen to them and that's really hard to prepare for. Mechanical problems can keep riders from cycling, but there's a different kind of trouble that probably keeps even more people off the road. Saggers, 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 saggers. Too many stops and too many parties, the trouble here, but sag wagons are an easy fix. Wait, this is not a sag wagon, it's a transitional, transitional vehicle. vehicle. <laughs> There's a difference. We are sagging. 
It's not exactly a graceful exit from the day's ride, but it works, and down the road in Westgate, others are spouting what you might call the gripes of wrath. Long, hot, windy. There was no tail. No, the roads are terrible, and this side wind was really more like a headwind. It's rough. We wanna, uh, it's been real rough. The winds are not very encouraging. In fact, the day has been so rough that some may have developed special problems that call for psychological therapy. It started when I was younger. I don't know, when I was a kid, these balloons just started growing through my chest. They thought, I don't know what they thought, but what it is now is what you see. And we always I can't explain it, I can't explain it. This is my husband. Despite exhaustion, some have enjoyed the day and still have energy for one last shot at a good time. It was fun. There was a headwind. There was lots of beer. It was all over. It was fun. We only have eight more miles to go, and then there's another party. With just eight miles to go now, an unofficial pace vehicle leads the way into Old Wine for some, while others revel in their decision to take the Lazy Boy approach. This is my 13th rag, right? I've done seven of them on regular bikes, six on one of these, and I'll never go back. Oh, definitely. I've never ridden it on a regular bike, and I would never want to. And so the longest leg of rag dry winds into the day's destination. Obviously tired, with some exceptions, but not too tired for a good trick. The IRS juggle. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, 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 gimme. And my disco finish. Ah, thank you. All right. The juggler amuses hundreds, and just the other side of that crowd, a magician attempts to do the same. Now you watch this magical Mr. Red Scar. It's right before your eyes. It disappears. See, it's gone. It's right here, but it is invisible. It's here. Now I'm gonna take this magical Mr. Red scarf and shove it back in my palm, just like this. <laughs> it's an old trick, but a good one. Let's see if you can figure it out with another Ragbri slow motion replay. Of course, slow motion isn't fair when it comes to magic tricks, but our guess is that this guy is so good you might still have trouble catching the answer. In any event, with magic in the air and a goat raffle among tonight's downtown events, the weather forecast for tomorrow is the last thing most riders want to think about. Once again, wind, and the short 16-mile ride from Old Wine to Aurora is a bear. In Aurora, both victims and brave survivors. We tried some pace lines, and they don't really seem to work at all. I never thought I'd ever do a seg, but that's what we're waiting for. <laughs> it was brutal. But we're tough. That's why we're here. I think now we're turning down south, going to go right into it. But I'm, not, I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Winter. Hello there, young man. How you doing? You having a good trip? Hang in there. The wind's gonna go down. One more mile to the city park. Rest, relaxation. It's a hearty welcome in Winthrop, but with only about a third of the ride complete, there are even more victims. That, however, does not keep the spectators from having fun. Well, I think it's wonderful. I just, I just think it's real nice that many people are interested in doing something like this. We're really enjoying watching them. You really don't even notice the wind here in town, but once out on the open road, Team oh. Grandma gives in, and others might wish they'd worn ankle weights this morning. 
Jeez, it's windy out today for crying out loud. <laughs> I wish they'd stand the state of Iowa up the other way and this wind would be blowing us the other direction. <laughs> but it's only 20 miles to go. We'll tough it out. Death before dishonor. And if not death, how about a turkey sandwich to ease the pain? Or maybe just obey the rules like Paul Balaker, who knows the ropes well after several years directing Colorado's Ride the Rockies bicycle tour. There's only one story with a beer, and that's what, that it's here to be drunk. I'm trying my best to comply with the regulations. And if beer can't help, how about trying to defeat the wind this way? I think it's more comfortable. Only one person seemed willing to use bare feet to try and battle the wind, but many decided just to go for it. And if the straightforward challenge to the wind wasn't enough, others tried humor. You know how many women it takes to change a light bulb? How many? <laughs> Seven. One to change the light bulb and six to form a support group. Perhaps it's just coincidence that the now infamous day five rainstorm started shortly after that joke. And perhaps it has something to do with the fact that Mother Nature is a woman. It doesn't matter except that once the rain starts, everyone could use a support group equipped with big umbrellas. This is probably the worst rain I've seen since 1978, I think it was. Um, right where I went through Spencer, and it was a torrential downpour. We sleep tonight, it's going to be wet. The seams are leaking in the tent, so <laughs> it's all rolling to the middle of the tent. I'm from California, and I think it's fine. <laughs> but we're, I'm from the land of fruits and nuts, so that's OK. <laughs> it might be a bit nuts to camp out in this at that. And the 18,000 balloon bicycle sculpture at Knoll Ridge Park takes a beating. Just a couple of days before, that sculpture by Dennis Patton was in top form, several stories high with every balloon in place. But now, like the human riders who had to weather this, the sculpture is tired and worn out. six and the rain is still coming down. By now about half the riders have adopted trash bag rain protection, but it won't be long before the bags come off. Just north of Iowa City, banjo player Mike Mullen begins to celebrate the end of today's rain. And the good weather also brings out another high five crowd. With spirits up all around now, so is the humidity, and the ride into Iowa City is a sweaty one. By the time the bulk of riders arrive, the heat index is in the stratosphere. That might be considered bad news to some, but it's certainly good news for bikini connoisseurs, and others find ways to cope as well. By the time this stop is over, what rain? What rain? The bad weather is just a memory. Just outside of Iowa City, the world's smallest beach party invites riders in for a shower and a free beer. The value of a muddy shower is a bit dubious, and sand space is limited. But good-natured rider harassment is in good supply. And nobody will ride with this guy. <laughs> or that guy. He won't even ride with the other guy. And if this party puts to rest any doubts you might have about Iowa's available beach facilities, 
Maybe this will once and for all lay to rest the debate about whether Iowa has hills or not. In fact, this officer is directing riders straight from hills to a rather large hill, but did not want to talk about it. Tell me about hills. How about another look at that? And now that hill outside of hills, a struggle, but at the top, a reward. This engine was new in 1935 or 36. I hope it's hard to take the lid off of. Oh, it is, good. We, we need a, a dip for this. Here, hold so on we're gonna now. pull a dash at first. Okay. The homemade ice cream is just one cooling off option. And finally, the destination. As dusk sets in, it seems to dawn on just about everyone that this is the last night of the tour. That means it's time to concentrate on the issue at hand, having fun. There's a kind of music here for just about everyone. Former Oakland Raider great Ben Davidson is on hand as usual, and with nighttime taking over, thousands take up the Ragri call. On Saturday, the clouds are back. Spectators are ready for the inevitable, and then it happens. As riders are stopped for traffic at a major intersection, a mass case of psychosis sets in. We love rain! We love rain! We love rain! We and if you believe that, you have to believe that these people are muskrats. Nose, ankles, legs, buttocks, chest, ears, Nose, hair. It's all wet. All wet, top to bottom. What? <laughs> <laughs> so it's working with mixed success, I can tell you that. <laughs> My socks are just about soaked now. Staying dry at all? <laughs> no. No, it's impossible. It's gonna start again now too. This is depressing. If this was not the last day, <laughs> I'd be in a car right now. It's very wet. It's fun, though. At least there's no wind. They say that being wet inspires more pit stops. Of course, most of us know what that means from an agricultural standpoint, but some still have to explain it to other people who might not know. When you got to pee, you got to pee, OK? So some of us use in drive-in cornfields. Women, a little more difficult. You got to get a little bit further in, okay? Cornfields are a well-proven answer, but as this day nears completion, other amenities are also in demand. Hot showers and clean living. Let's hear. Wait at the end of the ride. It's a great-sounding promise, and at about 11:30, there's good news to go with it. The rain stops, and many riders actually get to ride down Snake Alley after it dries off. Okay. the atmosphere is festive. The sun is out, and the last few blocks into the port of Burlington are all downhill. Then it's on to the Mississippi. Welcome to Burlington! 
Then turn to the left and dip your wheels in the river. <laughs> yeah! So tell me about it. I don't know. What do you mean? Tell you about it. It's great. You know Best thing I've ever done. <laughs> The traditional tire dunking draws a big crowd. To be honest, we don't know who got here first this year because this guy forgot to set our alarm clock. One thing for sure, though, the tradition of dunking tires into the water certainly inspires unique interpretations. Oh, great Mississippi, so mighty and pointy. With this bike, I do the anointing, anointing, anointing. With tire dunking coming in varied degrees, this guy thinks maybe he can ride on water. And here's our final official Ragbri slow motion replay. Eventually, the bike is recovered, and not long afterward, the closing ceremonies begin. Miss Iowa makes a brief appearance, and then Ragbri Wagon Master Don Benson takes the stand to testify in his own defense. This is our third time in Burlington, and uh, I want you to know right now, I get credit for Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, and from 11.30 this morning on. The rest of it is all, well, we won't say whose fault it is. With most kinds of weather having been covered on this tour, Grandpa Ragbri John Karras announces a plan for next year. Uh, we're going to try to do a little better next year. Uh, we didn't have any snow and we didn't have any hail. That's, uh, that's about all we have left for weather. And Ragbri co-host Iowa boy Chuck Offenberger offers an idea on the best way to remember this ride. It's been a great rag, Brian. Raleigh Link from Nevada just told me out on the road here a few miles. The greatest thing about this rag, Brian, is for years from now, we'll be able to tell st great stories about this one, all loosely based on fact. Finally, rag, Brian co-founder Don Call offers personal highlights to the first rag, Brian he's been on in years. I really enjoyed today. I think the best ride I had on the, on the ride, it was in a Buick. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I complained the first part of the week that uh, this wasn't a real rag ride because it wasn't tough enough. Well, it sure made up for lost time in the last few days. Hope you had a good ride. And thus, Rag Bright 18 is finished. But as the Burlington crowd begins to clear, one last reminder 51 weeks till Rag Bright. <laughs> Riser. 
lovers are off in a pack Done before noon each day Back in the back, hurry up, it's getting dark soon We've been in every bar along the way Right across Iowa Right across Iowa Cause they put on the whole show For the thousands of writers who go all the way Many more who wish they could go Keep on pedaling on Keep on pedaling on Six of us, Team Lone Star. They don't have Lone Star beer here. I don't know what's going on. He's getting our four. He's getting the best side. He's getting the best side. Bike Club. My name is uh, Rod Gardner. I'm from Burlington, Iowa, where we're going to finish. Rainbow! Well, we've probably got over 200, 250 people totally, but we just bring 70, 75. Greens! <laughs> Spoke Des Moines Soccer Club. Chicago Driver! <laughs> we're Team Trap, and we're Genuine. Go! Yeah! Zuland! 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 Zuland!
Doesn't last too long. 